to the last um, question that I used to see and then <laughs> at MIT back in the early 2000s and um, was part of the PDIO program there. We uh, had to, do, so it was an arrow action and it was required for all undergrads. And we had them running in C++, but they had to cross the compile down to the handy board and embed it into, uh, embed it into a small rover that had to perform a certain task. And um, and for about three years, and then I left, and then a person came away, and, and now they don't teach it anymore. Uh, it got into the grading and what was going to look like, and it was uh, not what it used to be. <laughs> they put in a Lego lab class, so it's offered over AP. Yeah. Is it a Lego class now? Just a brief thing, handy board that got used in the Lego competition class. The same handy board? Oh, good. Newer, newer version. Okay. So, oh, come on. So, um, memory is best. And I'm going to talk to you about um, some, some products that have been developed recently by the software architecture thank you. <laughs> thank you for it. Uh, like from JPL. 
cells co lead the star. Same has still from uh, the IBM facility, who's the IBM program chief architect. Michael Madley, scientist for the simulation and development analysis branch. Daryl Ray, who is uh, the Orion Flight Software System Manager <coughs> at JSC. John Mears, who is the flight software lead for SLS. We are all from the saw earlier today. Lisa Marshall. Kate Weiss is a member, uh, and she is the what we call the cognizant engineer at Kagi for sales flight software product line called Flight Software Core. Not to be confused with Core Flight Software. <laughs> and then Jonathan Mon, who we were here yesterday, probably everybody knows who Jonathan is. He's very humble. He has called himself a software architect from Goddard, but I know he's one of the movers and shakers of making a Core Flight product <laughs> and so we have a community of NASA website. Uh, if you haven't heard of these, there's the NASA Engineering Network website, which is a number of communities, and the little community is right there. And if you click that, you'll find um, maybe about 20 communities. Uh, most of most are schools or even some management ones as well. And the tech ones typically line up along the line of some systems. <coughs> the bar of the community of practice sits under the software community of practice website. So um, we have uh, materials on here, including what conference events are coming up, frequently asked questions, lessons learned, how of, of you know, interesting relevant material. The, the contact list, <coughs> which has all the names on the previous slide, <coughs> some forums to discuss software architecture with other experts in the field, um, a, a schedule of reviews, and then and then finally something called prep for review. And they're also along the left hand column here. So prep for review is the one I'm going to focus on today. To put material there that help projects prepare for a review. And even if you don't have the review, you can still go here and use these as a resource um, to better architect your system. <coughs> for a review page, we have uh, a little more than half a dozen resources. And I'm looking into a lot, including a Say yeah, an, an architect, uh, a scope of architectural concern, maybe a reference architecture, some list of questions. Um, there's a project problem statement template that we like to see. You should always just start with your problem statement. What I want to focus in on first is preparing for a software architecture <coughs> review. At the bottom here is the website that you can go to to access these. Um, I put them are behind the firewall, but I think are there some of the community practice materials? Are they all behind the firewall? All behind the firewall. Okay, yeah. so you have to get behind the firewall to get this. Um, but if you're on the mission, you should be able to. Okay. <coughs> the first part is if you usually start with um, a software architecture description document. So the concept of, of of this particular material is recommended content for your software architecture description document. And six months trying to pull together what we should be using in a software architecture description document. This is more eight or nine people that I listed earlier. And so with it, um, we had a lot of back and forth until one of our members uh, said, hey, why don't we just use the SEI recommended content architecture description guide? There's a lot that come into the Software Engineering Institute, and they have a template. So if you start a template, you're already 99% of the way there. So our document says, uh, start an SEI template, and it has a link to that template. And we 
key areas. Don't worry about those areas so much. And oh, by the way, there are a few things that they might out that we think are really important that you should put in there. Um, this includes um, <coughs> fault management. There's really much description in the FBI template for fault management. A little bit of it, but um, not to the degree that we need for our mission. And the other that wasn't on there, um, I don't think I can put it on this part either. The other that we have missing is uh, uh, usability. If you're going to reuse, do I have it on there? Sure, fourth down. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Curtis analysis was also a Um, I think it kind of covers, you know, if you're building something for reuse. Think about these things. But whatever is, okay, I'm reusing something. What, uh, what do I need? You know, what trades do I need to do? What analysis do I need to do? And so, we really important to include in your architecture stuff. So, pay close attention to that as well. And here's the, 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 get the bottom of the page. Okay, the other new product that we have. Quality attribute table. And I recognize Jonathan Wilson who took the lead in pulling this together. So I asked with his participate in SUMO, which you can define your hands, but SUMO activity, which was multi agency, looking at SUMO across multi agency uh, and helping to define what quality attributes uh, should be identified for uh, flight software. Which ones should you be looking at? All right, so this is starting to get a little messy, but let me, let me see how I can tackle this. Uh, so what we've included on the SAR website, under the prep for review page, is a big table right now. And keep in mind this is a living document. It might be a little messy, but it got to the point of maturity where it might be useful to you. So we put it there, um, updating it, describing it some more. Um, but you can start using it at this point just as a, as, a, as a reference to help you think through some issues as you develop your software architecture. Enable with the first column being the attribute and, and the, the name that, that we on the SARB agree to call it. So in this case, ability <coughs> column includes what, how fine that attribute we also include synonyms for it because sometimes we have more than a word that kind of means the same thing. So we pushed all those into this column here. Um, we call aspects of because of an attribute like portability, there are many aspects of it. There, there's are not portability across platforms or portability across operating systems or portability of real-time versus non-real-time, because there's different aspects of that quality attribute. And then the next column is requirements. Um, and, and I shortened this just so I could get it on the slide. But we actually have we have some requirements that you could use on your project if you want, but it gives, it gives you an example of, of requirements that might, that you could use, that you could define for the aspect or particular aspect of the attribute. Um, the next column is the rationale for that requirement. You should always capture the rationale behind the specific requirement. And the next column is evidence of that if you're achieving that requirement, demonstrate the execution, say, of your software on a two different operations. <coughs> if you want that aspect of quality to be demonstrated. And then achieve that. And the last two columns of a group, maybe because we want to project to fill this part out. But Jonathan, I really think the project should be filling the whole thing out. You know, giving examples in the earlier version of columns. But the specified columns here are what's the prioritization of each attribute? Um, and what are maybe some intended variations? So, so the, you know, the project is 
organization um, just generalizing it to high and medium low. I don't think you can get any better defined. It's not the worst thing any more defined than that. Um, but uh, for example, um, you, you have a high priority of wanting to be portable. Um, and think about CFS, it's, it's portable as a, a, a no cell level above. And stuff like that, you might you might be at the limit of performance. And so these things have to be traded off. So probably in that case your portability would be high, your performance might be medium. So you really need to think about these things ahead of time um, before we jump in and design and develop the system. So, so these are intended to be filled out by the project.
And by the time we review, it's much more effective. So it's really helpful to, you know, we can place things in the week. We work ahead of time to help get your documentation ready for the review.
I'm doing. Um, the, the problem is the study is really dated. Uh, it's very, very old. Is it plan to update that study? I'll just let the sponsor. <laughs> I didn't have plans until you just brought it up. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. 